tonight on Would I Lie to You? Comfortable Superman, Eamon Holmes. King Size Cowboy, Dara O'Brien. And part of the furniture, Team Captain David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, she's a beautiful Swede, Ulrika Johnson. He's a lumpy turnip, Jimmy Carr. And their benched out team captain, Lee Mack. But first, please go, if not exactly wild, then at least slightly feral, for your host, Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to What I Lie to You, the panel game based on lies and how to spot them. We all lie, I know I don't. In fact, on average, we tell three lies every ten minutes of conversation, which would explain why Gordon Brown's last speech went on for almost two hours. <laughs> the German philosopher Nietzsche once said, Truth is only a mobile army of metaphors, metonyms and anthropomorphisms consisting of nothing more than the invention of fixed conventions. But I guess you had to be there. Which uh, brings us a little bit older, but none the wiser, to round one entitled Home Truths. Each of our guests has a card in front of them with either a lie or a truth on it. They have no idea what they'll be facing with when they turn the card over, which may explain the air of panic and sudden inability to read. <laughs> uh, either way, the opposing team must then glean whether or not it's genuine, and if you understand all that, then you're already way ahead of the panellists. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Ulrika, your home truth, if you would. Oh, that's me. Well, well done. done. <laughs> I hosted the British Sausage Awards. I won. That sounds very you, Ulrika. <laughs> Where were they held? Where were they held? Uh, at uh, BAFTA. At BAFTA? At the BAFTA headquarters. It's a strange place for a sausage awards. <laughs> does, does the sausage and film industries have a long relationship? <laughs> we provide sausages for lunch at all British films. <laughs> How many categories yeah. were there in the British Sausage Awards? Nicest, longest, fattest, tastiest. Oh. Oh. So, well, this is saving me £1.50 a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember any nominated sausages no that's all a bit of a blur actually evidently yeah. yeah so this is a while ago now this is not a gig we could get you to do now for no, example no has 90... your fee risen are you out of the british sausage producers I, range think so. I was paid very handsomely how much just out of interest i was probably paid about i don't know 30 grand stop it i mean D farming is in crisis <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing away £30,000 on patting each other on the back, as well as hiring BAFTA. <laughs> Sounds like a sort of sick party. <laughs> no. no one is saying that they shouldn't have awards. Let the poor sausage makers have a night out. But Jesus wept, 30 grand for a host. <laughs> That's a bit extravagant, to be honest. Uh, David, you're going to have to make a decision. I think Ulrika would have been embarrassed doing the sausage awards. I think 30 grand would takes away a lot of embarrassment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we think it's true. I, I, I think it's true. You think it? I, I want, well, I, I think it's a lie. Instinctively, I think it's a lie. Okay, you're going to override. I'm going your... to go with Eamon. Fair enough. They're saying it's a lie. So, uh, what is the truth, Ulrika? It's the truth. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yes, it's true. Ulrika did host the British Sausage Awards. Uh, as host of the awards, you're entitled to as many sausages as you can eat, which damn near bankrupted the sausage community the year Vanessa Feltz presented them. <laughs> Uh, sausages are formed from fat, blood, nostril, anus and offal. Coincidentally, uh. also the original names for the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> David. <clears throat> when I was 23, I had to talk my way out of a fight with a paper boy. <laughs> what was it about? What was it about? The fight about? It was about, uh, well, I was sitting, um, I was sitting sort of by the side of the road with a couple of friends and we were chuckling about something and he thought we were laughing at him. But you're a man and he's, what, it? No, he was sort of, I'd say, mid-late teens. And how old were you? I was 23. So you were 23, mid-to-late teens, and there's three of you and one of him. Yep. <laughs> I mean, of the, th the three of us, one was a girl and one was me. <laughs> so... Uh... And what, what happened? How did you talk your way out of the fight? Well, he came towards us. Very, he dropped the bag the, with the papers in. Mm. Thud. <laughs> and, he, and he said, he was, coming, he was like, coming up like this, going... Uh, like what, sorry? Like, like this. When was this? 1872? <laughs> <laughs> did he, he go like this? Yes, he went like this because, yes, he was an otter. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, he, he said, I think he said, uh, have you, it was either what's your problem or have you got a problem. It, it involved the word problem, but not in a kind of, not, he, he wasn't really a problem solver. He wasn't like looking for a problem, he wasn't looking for you to go, my first is in crane, but not in canoe. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, I had, I had a strong impression that that would have increased my chances of getting hit. Mm. And actually, what were your friends called? Uh, Tom and Emma. Oh, sounds like oh. it was really going to kick off. <laughs> Bless you. But when you're not telling the truth, you get also you become like a little schoolboy and smiley and very hesitant and suddenly, ooh, you're just, I mm. want to take you home and put you up on a shelf. <laughs> Se second half of that's worse than the first. <laughs> <laughs> so are you thinking this is the truth You've got or are you agreeing with he's Ulrika? Lying. You've got... He's lying. There's no way he's lying. He wouldn't lie about a thing like this. Go with me. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Who do you listen to? I'm going to go with Ulrika and say that I think that uh, it's a lie. OK. David? Oh, my God. A quick reveal. Uh, it lie. is, in fact, true. It's... He's very good at lying. <laughs> I don't want to take you home He's anymore. He's so sweet, isn't he, when he tells the truth. <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy, your turn to astonish us. Right you are. Uh, I starred in a Japanese commercial for Snuff. Is snuff a big thing in Japan? Because it's sort of slightly peaked in the West, I think, <laughs> its level of popularity. They're making commercials for it still, so I'm guessing bigger, but right. no idea. What was the slogan? I have no idea. I just read auto cue phonetically. I mean, I could have declared war for all I know. Right. <laughs> but I imagine I said buy snuff. I said something like you can have too, too much of a good thing, I think was the slogan. It was something like that. Because right. it was a guy doing a line of snuff. <laughs> Like, like a massive line of snuff, and then his face, like, he did it for real, and like his face kind of ludicrously kind of... So their slogan for selling snuff involved saying, don't have that much of it. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. It's, it's advertising whiskey with someone dying of alcoholism. And then saying, a little bit is tasty, but so... yeah, it killed this guy. <laughs> Why did they choose you to be the, the I've face Because of... my TV show, uh, the distraction show that I did on Channel 4, and the American one, goes out in Japan. And it's quite big, because it's like endurance, but it's with Westerners being hurt, and they love that. He looks almost Japanese. I look almost Japanese. Look <laughs> <laughs> that is the acceptable face of racism. <laughs> so, are you still in two minds, or Eamon, three, or thoughts? four? He was very convincing. Unless the production crew are mental, we'll be seeing it in about a minute. That's... Oh, he's, he's threatening a clip. <laughs> I imagine. So, is there any truth in this? I, I think it's a lie. I think it's that a lie. That bit too. makes me think it's a lie. The, the clip, the clip, the clip was just oh, too yeah. far, Jimmy. <laughs> so, you're veering towards untruth. Lie. 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 Okay, lie. the truth, Jimmy? I can tell you it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but a good lie. Good one. The next round is called The Ring of Truth. So I'll be reading out the top celebrity fact, and the panellists, in turn, will dissect, discuss, and finally deduce whether or not that fact has about it the ring of truth or the stench of deceit. So, your teaser. To <laughs> coincide with the US version of The Weakest Link, uh, Ben & Jerry released a limited edition and Robinson-flavoured ice cream. An ice cream that tastes solely of bile and remorse. I, I can't <laughs> see that. Not so. It sold out in two weeks. Very popular. When you open the tin, was the surface of it really taut in an unnatural kind of way? Because <laughs> if you couldn't possibly break into the ice cream beneath. She's doing that thing in the photo, that wink thing, isn't she, which always unnerves me, because she does it at the end of The Weakest Link to sort of say, you know, like, it's She's all a joke, I'm not really evil. But that's the bit that scares the crap out of me. <laughs> the thing is, though, that, that wink is the only thing that... She used to do that on points of view as well, and she's sort of trying to say that she's in some way being consistent. Well, ah. in points of view, she didn't read out the people's letters and then just say, you know, off. <laughs> which she does to the answers of the nice people on The Weakest Link who are trying to win a quiz. Do you think when you open the ice cream it just has, it has written on top, use a proper spoon, dickhead! Yeah. <laughs> there are precedents. Right. Uh, well, they, they've made Desperate precedent. Housewives editions uh, called Cherry Hatcher. So what was the Anne Robinson one called? Uh, Ginger Ice Queen. <laughs> oh. Ginger ice cream's really nice. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna taste like of ginger, not of that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> No, ginger is a recognised pleasant flavour. She's a recognised asshole. <laughs> no, that's, that's totally different. That's you know, like it's just people really who, can, who like ginger enough to be able to stomach the side of her face while they eat it. Now, I can right. believe that those people exist. 
So that's suddenly it's become a lot more plausible. What suddenly you're saying that ice cream, ice cream, the flavour of a woman who's undergone loads of surgery, is obsessed with money, and for some reason considers herself witty. No, no, no. Ginger ice cream with a picture of that bitch. Yes. <laughs> Next week, when Anne Robinson is our guest, you'll be on Lee's team. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Anne. I like Anne. I, we went for a meal with Anne Robinson, do you remember? Yes. It was a, it was a BBC meal. And she came up to me and she went, Are you a scheduler? And I thought, No, I'm going to go. So I went, Yeah, I am. Well, why have you rescheduled my show? <laughs> and I went, Well, Anne thought I was going to go along with it. It's because she actually thinks I'm scheduling shows. So I said, Because it's not very good. <laughs> Good. It needs to be on later, is it? It's absolutely rubbish, Anne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is that how she really talks? She talks like that. Mm -hmm. um, she, <laughs> she, she was going like, can I have more wine? Mm -hmm. It's not real. It's, I'm a pretend evil witch. <laughs> <laughs> what are we thinking? I think it's true. I think it's true, Jimmy. Oh, Rika? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's true. OK, we'll go for true. OK, they're saying it's true. David, your verdict. It all boils down to this. Would you nibble her or not? Well, I mean, I certainly wouldn't, as, no. as I think I've made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, neither metaphorically nor in real life. Oh, I'm actually going to be sick. <laughs> I don't think it's true. Uh, I don't think it's true. No. OK, we're going to say it's a lie. And you'd be absolutely right, it is a lie. <laughs> it's complete rubbish. Yes, uh, Ben and Jerry did not manufacture an Anne Robinson flavoured ice cream, although the plan had been to freeze the ingredients by holding them next to Anne Robinson's heart. <laughs> so, at the end of uh, that round, a quick look at the scores shows that it's Lee's team who have it all to do, given that David's team are 5 4 in the lead. Telly Tales is a frankly slightly twee title of our next round. Uh, some classic TV footage for us all to endure, after which Lee's team will give us an additional related fact. Uh, this week, our uh, subject matter is the pioneering children's infotainment series Blue Peter. Since it first hit our screens in 1958, Blue Peter has inspired thousands of kids to watch the other side. <laughs> so let's just remind ourselves of some of its wilder moments. Lovely. Unfortunately, the goat that you saw in that excerpt has died. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hello. Hello. So, Ulrika, what is your related fact? Uh, <clears throat> Petra, the first Blue Peter dog, died the day after her first show. So producers secretly replaced her with a look-alike. So do we think this is true, David? Well, I think if Petra had died after the first show, that's exactly what they would have done. When you've got a show and you're hoping it's going to run for 50 years, you know, <laughs> like we're hoping with this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what... Yes, you've, you've, they must have made a point of introducing... This is a new sort of television we're doing where the programme has pets, and the children who haven't got pets can maybe think it's their pet. They couldn't possibly say to those children on episode died. two, it died. <laughs> we, we left it in the car, in the car parts, <laughs> and we didn't, didn't leave a crack. <laughs> but we would probably have heard that. That probably would have gone I, I think you'd know that. I think you'd know that. I think it's, I think it's true. Good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. OK, they're saying I'm, it's true, Ulrika. No, what well, we think is true. Hang yeah. on, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we think it's true, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, well, you're on your own on this one. You've screwed up before, both of you. <laughs> 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 really no. Okay, uh, they're going for that. David, you're saying it's true? We're saying it's you're true. You're saying it's true. Or we can reveal all. Oh, please. Yeah, it's true. It is, it's true. That's amazing. It is true. Uh, Petra was secretly replaced by a look-alike after her death. Some people say that if you watched Blue Peter at the time, you could see clues that Petra had been replaced, like the rotting dog in the corner of the studio. <laughs> so, uh, Jimmy's fascinating fact is next, but first a masterclass from Simon Groom on how to present live TV. Uh, the thing about the tantalum is that, as I say, it's very light and very, very strong and uh, ideal for these darts. Um, Ah, oh, where am I? I'm talking... <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> Darts. <laughs> uh, 
absolutely completely lost. Right, okay, let's start about dance again. They're also uh, thinner. Now, the thing is, Goldie, will you go away about, uh, about them? I think I'd better start talking about the dartboard because I'm absolutely lost. Let's start about the dartboard. Look, you wrote it all down. Here, have a look. It's so much to remember, but it's Thank terribly you. crucial. All right. OK, <laughs> well, let's start again. Um... I like the way the woman came in and went, it's terribly crucial. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there's never been anything less important than this in your life. Yeah. <laughs> I feel this pain. I did, I did Kids TV for years. I did Kids TV in Ireland for Constantly. And your co-presenters hate you. Like, what she did there? Oh, man, Kids TV presenters are always doing that. Great. If you watch CBBC now, you see them all being friendly and palsy and, oh, oh we're, we're having a great time and we're making stuff and doing stuff. But they will, at any stage, wish to pick up the safety scissors and stab the other person and go, yeah. how did you get top of the pops, you bitch? Uh, so, <laughs> It's a vicious thing. So, Jimmy, what's your intriguing piece of information? Right, OK, my, my fact on this is uh, Simon Groom and Peter Duncan once had a fight in the Blue Peter Garden after a row over a BBC parking space. Now, what, why did they choose the Blue Peter Garden? They were in the garden filming a bit and they had a fight. They were filming a bit. The parking had pretty nearly happened earlier. Yep. And they filmed it. Well, how did the parking anger reassert itself? They, they were fighting over parking spaces. It's all right, I've got this, Angus. Leave it. It's quite rare. <laughs> it's not like the, the... I can handle this. But uh, this is what I don't understand. They've, they've been the an show. argument about the parking spaces. They're filming the piece in the garden. Why does the fight start there? So, so imagine you're the having a disagreement was... with someone. You're having a disagreement. I've never disagreed with anyone, but OK, I can imagine. Well, you're disagreeing with me right now, so <laughs> this is what it's like. No, it's just, you know, we... <laughs> We, we both mean the same thing. It's just you don't realise it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think in fairness to them, it says it's about a parking space, but clearly they didn't get on with each other. The rumours were that Simon was slightly jealous of, of Peter. Maybe they actually really did get on deep down. There was a lot of love there. And but a lot of love and complicated <laughs> feelings and tears and hate, and they start fighting. And, and just then, to uh, touch, to touch <laughs> another human, and then the fighting starts getting a bit of amorous, and you know, yeah, and then that, they're that and Maybe, fighting and scratching their clothes off each other, and then they fall in the pond, and it's all fine, and there's no sex. <laughs> you know what co-presenters are like, don't you, Eamon? That would never have happened in GMTV. We didn't have a garden to f***ing fight in. That was. <laughs> Sorry, did you say to f and fight in order to f and fight? <laughs> David, what's your answer? Do you think it's true? Well, knowing presenters, I think it's very true. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a no. I think it's, I think it's a lie. We're going for You're lie. You're going for lie? Yeah. OK, Jimmy, truth James. or lie? I can tell you that it is a lie. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> Jimmy uh, was in fact lying. Uh, Simon Groom and Peter Duncan did not have a fight over a parking space. Uh, the BBC parking spaces were awarded strictly on the basis of merit, so neither of them had one. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's Lee's team who are having to take a long, hard look at themselves, trailing as they are, 8-4. Our next round goes by the nonsensical title of This Is My. Each of David's team will claim to have a genuine connection with tonight's special guest person who we're about to introduce you to. It's up to Lee's team to identify the real McCoy. So please welcome this week's special guest person, Alan. Uh, now, Dara, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Alan. Alan is a mate of mine. I was best man at Alan's wedding. Uh, which was a number of years ago, and at his wedding, Alan, although you'd be hard-pressed to believe it now, weighs 27 stone. Wow. OK, David, what's Alan to you? Uh, this is my driving instructor, Alan. Uh, I've had over 70 driving lessons, and <laughs> I still haven't passed. <laughs> and uh, finally, Eamon, what's your relationship with Alan? Well, this is my friend Alan, and he is the Manchester United stadium announcer. So... A uh, former fatso, according to Dara, a long-suffering driving instructor, if you believe David, or Eamon's voice of Manchester United. Lee. Uh, so he was how, how heavy was he? Hmm? How heavy? Twenty-seven, I think, at his peak. Twenty. You were his best. Twenty-seven. So what would he? What might he weigh now? At Just the moment, at the moment, he's about, he's about thirteen. At the moment, thirteen, fourteen. What? Uh, what's Alan's surname? Kerr. I love the way you said that. Kerr. <laughs> You didn't actually say that. You just opened your mouth and hoped that some noise came out. Hang <laughs> on. <laughs> you didn't say that. You just opened your mouth and noise came out. That's how you say things, <laughs> Lee. <laughs> I'm not sure how you communicate. What's his name? <laughs> 
Now, according to David, he's a driving instructor, of course. Right, so, uh, how many times have you failed? Four times. You've had 70 lessons? Four times. Yeah, At what stage did you work out he's incentivised for you not to pass? <laughs> Is he telling you things like, yeah, look at the pedals, look at the pedals at all times, <laughs> manoeuvre, mirror, signal? <laughs> To, to be fair, I, I, I blame myself for failing, because I mean, he didn't tell me the things I failed for were, you know, OK to do. So he's become a friend, anyway, over, over the years, I suppose. Well, we, you know, we, I would say we're, you know, massively close. I don't know whether we'll stay in touch, but, uh, <laughs> but then again, we may never lose touch. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> I'm interested in Eamon's uh, announcement story here. So um, he's a friend, is he, Eamon? I've known Alan for over 20 years. I first met Alan BBC Manchester, where he works as a um, uh, presenter. And uh, he also works as the announcer at Old Trafford. What's the stadium called again? I don't know what oh, the stadium's called. Oh, but seriously, know... Jimmy. You really are one of the lads, aren't oh, you, Jimmy? Old... <laughs> I know it's Old Trafford, but hasn't they, haven't they got some bullshit name for it as well? No. Theatre of Dreams, yeah. Theatre of Dreams, that's it. That's the funny one. <laughs> it's like, it might as well be the Ballet of the Imagination. It's such a <laughs> bullshit name for a stadium. The Theatre of Dreams. What dreams? I dreamt I kicked the ball. <laughs> well, they're going to have to push you for an answer. Um, I think the driving thing sounds plausible to me. 70 lessons and failed. No offence, but I could believe that. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's driving instructor. Do you? Yeah. Although Dara's looking pretty pleased with himself there on the end. Yeah. He's looking mm. quite chuffed. He's just happy to be out. <laughs> 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 what do you think, Ulrika? I'd go with Amy. OK, so what are you saying, Lee? Should we go with David? We'll say David. Two against one. OK, well, Alan, perhaps you'd like to tell us who you really are. I'm Eamon's friend. I'm the stadium announcer at the Theatre of Good Dreams, uh, Old Trafford. Congratulations to Alan. Uh, Alan has several duties at the club. He announces the teams, the scorers' names, and how many lap dancers the players have roasted the night before. <laughs> and so to our final quickfire round, more lie detecting without the aid of ethanol, but this time against the clock, starting now. <coughs> Eamon. <coughs> I once saw Carol Vorderman broken down at the side of the road, but I didn't stop to help her as I was running a bit late. How do you mean broken down? In a car, or she was having well, she's a breakdown? She's having a nervous break. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car. So yeah. where, where was this, Eamon? A3. Right. The by. And, and does she know that you ignored her? She didn't know at the time, and I really felt bad about it because it was a flat tyre, it was smoking at the back, and there was a lot of smoke. I'll tell you what she should do. She should consolidate her debts into one easy monthly payment. <laughs> and then take out a loan and buy a better car. That's what she should do. What were you late for? Well, I was just, I just had to get home. Sleep's very important in my life, you know, it was... What time is it? Well, it was ten o'clock at night, but it was a summer's night. And so you this left was like a quite woman a... on her own, on yeah. the side but of the road. But it was a bright night. It was a bright night? Where were you? In Norway? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a summer's night. Uh, so what are you thinking? I think he's telling a bloody great big lie. Mm. I, think he, I, I think it's definitely a lie, isn't it? I think the team thinks it's a lie, so we'll, we'll lie. go with lie. They're saying it's a lie. Tell us. It's a lie. Ooh. It yes. is a lie. <laughs> yes. Carol is, of course, considered the thinking man's crumpet. I presume you die any man who's thinking I wouldn't mind shaking some mutton dressed as lamb tonight. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> She's not here. She'll never be invited on, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Jimmy. I lost my virginity at 26. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I c c yeah, we can cut yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we are, we are. We are. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. OK, we can, we can cut yeah. OK, is it true? true? Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> No, 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 seriously. Yeah, That's yeah. true. For, for, for the sake of, you know, decency, go on, tell us all about it. Uh, <laughs> well, I was very religious growing up. Very religious until I was about 26. And then... <laughs> and then I was right. all about the poontang. <laughs> <laughs> David, do you believe this? Yeah, I'm buying it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the That's rest of That's what he team. said, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jimmy, could you uh, reveal the truth, please? I can indeed. No shame in that. It, it is true. absolutely Woo! true. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, Jimmy did lose his virginity at the age of 26. Also, coincidentally, it was the day that he discovered he could make people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 next. Oh. Dara. Oh, I have received a text message from Bono. Of course you have. You're Irish. Yeah. 
and there are seven of us. Uh, <laughs> we live in one big house, and we all dance in a circle around <laughs> together. What was the, What did the text say? Did it say "Beautiful day is out Monday"? No, no, it, it, no, it wasn't a group text. It was, it was a specific thing because I did a, I, I did a gig for a charity that I had over there, and he just said thanks for the gig. Are you text pals now? I did. I sent a reply, but uh, it didn't. Uh, bloom into a full-scale relationship. What did you say? Me, no problem, D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you kept it? No, because you, well, I've, that's a couple of phones ago now. It's sitting on a Nokia somewhere in a drawer at home. Yeah. Frankly, I don't need it that much socially. Conversation doesn't die off in my house so much you go... <laughs> <laughs> uh, has anyone got a charger from the early millennia that I could use? <laughs> I've got a thing I want to show you. Yeah. Uh, so what are you veering towards? I think it is... True. It's true. Okay, we'll say that's true. Okay, fact or fabrication? You go for true. If it just kills this ridiculous notion that just because I'm Irish, I know all other <laughs> Irish people, it's a <laughs> freaking lie. <laughs> right. Next. Amen. Now, I have seven cats, and they're called Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Pickle. <laughs> Sorry, what was the last one? Pickle. Pickle. Why Pickle. didn't you call him Sunday? Because, as the audience will say to you, it sounds better when you say, Hello, little pussy pickle. Doesn't it? Uh, are, you, are you suggesting that Sunday would be an absurd name to call a cat? <laughs> no, you're not a cat person. Uh-uh. And also, you'd sound like you had dementia or something. If you... <laughs> Monday! Tuesday! <laughs> Wednesday! It's Monday, Eamon! Is it? <laughs> Where's my slippers? Pickle pussy! <laughs> We're not idiots, Eamon. We're not idiots. Could you describe Tuesday to me? And don't say it was a lovely walk in the park. Right? <laughs> Tuesday is a particularly ginger little tom cat. Thursday. Thank Tell you us about Thursday. 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 Thursday's grey and sort of white chest. Yes, uh, what colour's Wednesday? Wednesday's sort of... Well, you won't believe this, but sort of green olive looking colour. Okay, green well, cat now! Oh, well, <laughs> well, of course it's true. You've got a green cat. <laughs> What colour is Tuesday's cat again? Tuesday's cat is a sort of gingery colour. Yeah. Oh, but good idea. <laughs> yes. He's, he's remembered that lie. I'm willing to go for it. <laughs> Jimmy thinks it's true. Eureka. I'm kind of inclined. <laughs> Are you too mental? I'm feeling... <laughs> Are you actually he's just, mental people? He's just so he's lovable. He's got a green cat. What bit of that is true? <laughs> it's an absolute load of codswallop, Heyman Holmes. Are you saying it's not true? So, is he lying or is he not? It's a lie. Yes! It was cool. You were very good. It's a lie. Eamon does not have seven cats called Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Pickle. The only spoiled, pampered creature Eamon spent any time with is Anthea Turner. And after a while, he wouldn't let her on the sofa either. Incidentally, <laughs> Pickle the cat is what Korean chefs do if customers order a starter. <laughs> Which uh, irritating noise means that at the end of our final round, it's uh, David, who are tonight's superheroes, triumphing over Lee's team 13 6. <laughs> so, many congratulations to our winners, slightly fewer to our losers. Uh, join us next week for more issues with the truth. And remember that liars will often touch their nose, mouth, or ears when telling a lie, as when Sharon Osbourne says, all these are completely natural. Good night. <laughs>